Hopefully you'll have seen by now mine and Mark's ride around the North Coast 500 in Scotland. Don't let us know the ending yet. We don't know because we haven't finished and uh, quite frankly I'm not entirely sure whether we're going to make it. But anyway, whilst we've been cruising along on this incredible stretch of road, we thought it would be a great opportunity to actually talk to Mark and find out some of his ultra endurance tips. So, probably a bit late for me now given that we're nearly all the way around. I don't know, I think you've got it in you. Ultimately, ultra endurance is your ability to suffer. Just doing long rides, believe it or not, doesn't actually set you up particularly well to ride or race ultras. Physically, it's amazing what the body can suffer if the head can just stop freaking out about it. So, so what would your, your golden tips be then for someone that perhaps is comfortable with road cycling, you know, they've done sportives, Grand Fondos, races, but to then transition over to those ultra distances? So if you're doing certainly multi-day rides, but you're not racing, uh, I mean, I would encourage anyone who's riding big distances for the first time not to not to enter a race, just to go out there and try and push themselves over distance. So your setup on the bike is going to be a bit different. Okay. Um, you know, don't try and be too much of a race snake. You know, your your positioning on your, your bike, your your form on the bike is is absolutely crucial. So, you know, if you've got a really slammed front end, if you're used to going out with your mates at the weekend on a really aggressive setup, that's really going to hurt you over the big distances. As you felt on this ride especially maybe raising the front end a little bit, getting a bit of weight off the hands. If you're really slammed at the front, that gets pretty sore. Yeah. I mean, when I'm riding big distances and it's safe and it's flat roads, you know, I'm out on the tri bars. Um, but anything you can do to move your hand position around, so not just sit on the lugs all the time, but, you know, moving to the middle, you know, using that as a good climbing position. Because that numbing, that pins and needles you get, is avoidable, so don't, don't just live with it. The amount of riders who have said to me, you know, really bad saddle sores and hand numbing is just something you have to live with. You, you, can, you can really learn to, you know, adjust your body and be more comfortable on the bike. The, the other thing I would say when it comes to, um, like, being comfortable on the road, and here's a great example. Here's a road with just a lot of bumps and loose. Um, as you get tired, as you get towards the end of your big days, we all tend to get quite A-framed on the bike, yeah. so we end up riding like this. So it's, it's so, so important that your upper body is the shock absorber on the bike, because over, you know, five, 10, 15 hours on the bike, that really hurts. So keeping a neutral upper body for me is always starting with the elbows. If your elbows are, you know, relatively flat to the road, then the upper body can just take whatever's given to it, whereas when we tire, you see so many riders with their shoulders up around their ears, and it just is so much punishment, and, yeah. and it doesn't really let the legs continue to have a nice high cadence either. So whatever you can do on the bike in terms of form, just to make it a bit more comfortable yourself, you'll feel early on in a ride, if you've got too much weight through your hands, or you're taking too much punishment through the road, you need to you know, just relax up that upper body a bit. Okay. That's a great tip, actually. I hadn't thought about that. Now, what about the training side of things? So, I mean, how, how do you train for something that's going to take 12, 16, 24, 30 hours? Or multi-day. I mean, like, it's one thing doing a mega day. It's another thing waking up after a few hours sleep and then doing it again, yeah. again, again. So whether it's a Land's End John O'Groats or it's a Transcon or, you know, something even bigger, you know, it's all about not just how good you are in any given day, but how quickly can you recover? Um, I spend my life telling people trying to get into ultra endurance to stop riding distance. We can all go out and do tempo rides. We can all go out and just turn the pedals over zone one, zone two. But actually, what really builds that tolerance, what I mean by that is riding ultra endurance is about not breaking down. It's about yeah. not injuring. The amount of riders who, you know, they'll be really strong club riders, but you take them for a 
four or five day ultra and their, you know, the, the, the tendonitis would start to come in, repetitive strain injuries. So your fit on the bike's pretty key for that. I mean, you felt it yourself even on this ride, you know, with just that tightness through the tendons. Yeah. It's more than the muscles, it's just that use from the tendons. And if your alignment isn't quite right on the bike, then you're gonna pay for it. So your, your bike fit's key, but training, train hard, train through the ranges, you know, train, by that I mean power ranges, cadence ranges. Like, you know, I spend a lot of my time doing much shorter sessions, you know, 90 minutes, two hours. Um, and then you can build the conditioning on the bike on top of that, the ability to just go out and do long, long rides. Yeah. But um, just doing long rides, believe it or not, doesn't actually set you up particularly well to ride or race ultras. Yeah. So, so it comes down to getting like really fit. Then how, I mean, what tips can you give for sort of mental conditioning? Because yeah. I guess, that's going to be the difference, isn't it, between yeah. being a, you know, a fit cyclist and someone that can go the distance. I think, you know, we, I think we're all fascinated with the human psyche, and ultimately, ultra endurance is your ability to suffer. And I mean, road racing is your ability to suffer as well, but it's your ability to suffer amongst others. Whereas, you know. Ultra endurance riding, you're racing yourself, you're pushing yourself. If you want to stop, you just stop. Yeah. So the only thing keeping you going is your wish and your want. There's no, there's no mile markers, there's no, there's no um, sporty fruit that you're following. You know, it's, it's on you. So uh, you've got to hold yourself to account. You've got to be really good at giving yourself mile markers down the road. Just, you know, how are you going to break up the the ride, I mean, when we set out this morning, we had 200 miles to ride, and we've now got a pretty nasty headwind. Yeah. It doesn't bear thinking about how many more hours we're gonna do this for. But, you know, physically, it's amazing what the body can suffer if the head can just stop freaking out about it yeah. and just get busy with the task. Well, the difference for me is that a road race is like acute discomfort. It's, you know, it's more painful, but you know it's short-lived. Yeah. Whereas, like you say, this, I know that I've still got a hundred and goodness knows what miles to go. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm struggling with that, if I'm completely honest. We all like the idea of taking ourselves out of our comfort zone and figuring out you know, what our metal is. That's, that is to be human. We don't actually want the comfortable life. We want... We want to be, we want to suffer. We want to do things which are difficult, but then we want to have a shower, have a beer, tell our mates about it. And we're all motivated through tough stuff, you know, whether it's, you know, running a marathon, riding a sportif, doing a race, whatever. We're, we're all motivated by getting through that suffering and then the light at the end of the tunnel. Whereas the, the challenge with ultra endurance and, and expeditions when it comes to my world, you sometimes have to be motivated you know, because of what you're doing, not the idea it's soon going to be over. Okay. You know, I've cycled around the world twice, and trust me, when you're in the middle of the outback, you're not thinking about getting back to the start and finishing line in Europe. You know, it's just too big. It's too, it's way, way too big. That's an 18,000 mile race. You're in it. You're absolutely in it. You have to motivate yourself by that reality, not kidding yourself by some you know, shower of beer, the fact that it's soon going to be over. So do you break you it down you... into smaller chunks then? Or is it a case of literally just one pedal rev at a time? Yeah, I, I, I try not to distract myself from it. I try not to, you know, take myself out at the moment. Just, just, that sounds a bit zen, but you're in it. Just, just be in that moment, you know. If it's bad, it'll get better. If it's good, it'll get worse. You know, nothing is steady state when you're doing big ultras. And you just need to somehow learn that. I think the other thing, we were chatting about this earlier, unless you've done like big, like big single day events or multi-day events, whenever you start hurting like you are, like I am right now, then you think you're kind of on the way to injury. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's amazing if you stop for five minutes, grab some food, stretch the legs, get back on the bike. You can keep going, the body adapts incredibly well. And there's a big difference between 
being in like being sore and being injured. Yeah. So a lot of people, I guess, if they've never been there before, the moment they get sore, they think they're on the way to injury. And what about what about the physical pain then? Because you can, I guess, do yourself a lot of damage by riding your bike for such inordinate lengths of time. But I mean, how do you know when you're doing yourself proper damage? Is that a consideration? Yeah, I think. I mean, I do think that comes with experience. There is a, there's a big difference between hurting and being injured, you know, and you, you learn as you learn your body and you push yourself through more and more endurance what that difference is. Um, so I think if you've never been to that place before, the moment you start really hurting, you back off. Yeah. Whereas you can, you can ride through. And I guess that links really well with just how to ride endurance, road riding I'm talking, because you know, if you go out for a club ride or a sportif, you leave it all out there. Yeah. Like it's a battle of attrition, it's a ride to fail. You're allowed to finish absolutely done. Whereas ultra endurance riding is all about, yeah, pushing yourself, but ultimately being in a state where you can wake up a few hours later or after a night's sleep and do it again. Yeah. And again and again. So um, your style of riding needs to change. Now, one thing that I've noticed, uh, and I noticed it first when, when I was lucky enough to join you on your first day of um, your Around the World, was how regimented you were with timekeeping. And although obviously this is not a Around the World record attempt, there is still this sense time, that... Time matters. Exactly. And you know, if you sit in a cafe for an hour, then you know, potentially that's going to mean you're riding into the dark. And so is that something that comes naturally to you? That sort of, yeah. And is it something that you look at a watch and go, hang on a minute, we've sat down now for 10 minutes, we've got to get on the road? It depends. I mean, I think the bigger the group, the more the tendency to procrastinate, chat fast, check your phone, just time, time flies. Um, it's totally fine. If you're doing a, if you're doing like a bike packing trip and you're wanting to ride 100 miles a day, you know, faff all you want. You can, you can get your 100 miles done. If you're wanting to do 150, 200, 250 miles, you know, you're going to have to be seriously diligent on time. Yeah. And uh, I mean, my mantra going around the world the last time was, don't ask me to ride the bike faster, just make sure I'm on the bike at the right time. Yeah. So if we faffed, considering I was riding four hour sets a day, four of them, if, if, we, if I faffed for five minutes, every time I got off the bike, that would add over a day to the world record. Wow. So, yeah, right, rather than me, and what I would say to the team, like getting on the bike at 4 a.m., if I, if I got on the bike late at eight o'clock, like we needed to have a conversation why I was on the bike late, because even if I had tailwinds and downhills and I made up that in terms of times and I got the distance done, you're still cheating yourself. Yeah. You're still not doing, the simple things right and uh, you know as you know as soon as you try and up the tempo at all riding ultra your quads scream your legs hurt because you're tired you're depleted yeah. you sort of quite quickly get to that stage of almost like overtraining where I guess if you were racing you'd back off whereas that's just kind of the constant state of an ultra rider yeah <laughs> constantly tired yeah but it's important to say um, if you are hurting on the bike, uh, which happens, yeah, it is worth saying that um, you know you're gonna, you are gonna hurt on the bike as you push the distances, and uh, it's perfectly okay to um, to have some painkillers, you know, simple stuff. Um, but as you get super tired and you're pushing yourself it's really, really important to avoid anti-inflammatories. Yeah? Yeah, so, yeah. Well, ibuprofen? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it might be the, the first thing that you reach for, just thinking, well, my joints feel inflamed and I just want to, you know, look after my, bone, my bones and body, but... I was tempted this morning. Yeah, um, anti-inflammatories are really quite harsh on the, the kidneys in particular. And when your body's already under so much pressure and you're so, sort of 
pushed and depleted. Um, there's been there's been some good research on the fact that it is not good for you, and and athletes who have who have suffered with you know kidney, kidney failure and stuff. So it's um, painkillers are fine, um, but I would just stick to plain old paracetamol or something. Well, Mark, there's some absolutely brilliant tips there. Thank you so much. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you agree. And if you haven't seen that North Coast 500 epic, then do make sure you watch it. You can click through to it just on screen now.